Let's start from a seated position. With one hand, reach out and lightly touch the mat with your fingertips. With your other hand, touch the side of your head and with five deep breaths, slowly let your head sink closest to your shoulder. With your other hand, with each breath, feel the weight of your arm pull your other shoulder down as well. Try to keep your posture straight while breathing. Repeat the same stretch on the other side. We're going to repeat this two more times, but first we're going to turn our head to the side so that we get a different stretch. Now we're going to lie on our stomach. Carefully turn your head to one side and with a straight posture we're going to take five deep breaths. With each breath we're going to feel gravity pull the back of our head closer to the mat. Feel your shoulders drop, feel your back broaden, feel your neck slowly sink into the mat with each breath. Use your hands to lift your upper body up so you can turn your head to the other side carefully and gently. Push yourself back to a kneeling position. Widen your knees far apart, but keep your toes together. Lower yourself back down to the mat so that your belly and hips are close to the mat. You can make a pillow of your hands or turn your head to the side. Take five more breaths and with each breath, feel your hips sink towards the mat and your knees spread farther apart.
push yourself back and take a quick break. We're going to lower ourselves back down to our stomach, but we're going to leave a space for our arms. Palm up, thread one arm under your armpit as far as it'll go to the side. After you have stretched as far as it'll go, put weight on that arm and stretch the remaining arm so that your arms are stretched as far as they can go in either direction. Once you've worked them apart a little bit, we're going to take five deep breaths and again we're going to let gravity pull our head and our shoulders towards the mat. Feel your back broaden. If this is uncomfortable, you can put a block or a pillow to help support your head. Okay, let's move back to a seated position and set up butterfly pose. Put your feet together, relatively close to ourselves, and take a nice straight posture. We're going to take five deep breaths, and with each breath, inhale, we're gonna feel our heart lift, and on each exhale, we're gonna feel our heart and chest reach forward. Use your arms against your knees to help brace yourself and get an extra forward lifting motion. Okay, now reach behind yourself and with your fingertips, Pick your weight up off the mat and move your hips forward a little bit so the only things touching the mat are the sides of your feet and your fingertips. We're going to take a few more breaths and with each breath I want you to feel gravity pull your hips down towards your feet, opening up your hips and relaxing everything closer and closer to the mat. With each breath again let your chest come up with the inhale and forward with the exhale. Let's repeat that exercise one more time, but I've changed position so that you can see how with every inhale my chest lifts and with every exhale my chest comes forward. And you can see that my weight comes more and more towards my feet and my center of balance changes with every breath. For these seated exercises, the goal is eventually to have your knees touching the mat. However, that may not be comfortable for you for a while, so it's always okay to use a bolster or a pillow or a rolled up towel to give your hips a little extra elevation and make that a little easier on your knees. Now we're going to take a cross-legged position. Any cross-legged position will do, but if you can place one foot with your ankle right at your center and then bring your other foot across so it makes a triangle, you will find this a little bit easier for our next exercises. Again, we're going to sit here and we're going to take five deep breaths and really feel the sinking and opening feeling similar to the butterfly before we continue.
With each breath, again, inhale, let your chest rise. Exhale, let your chest come forward and feel your center of balance come towards your feet. Reach forward with your arms until you can feel your balance shift and settle your chest and stomach as close as you can to your ankles. We're going to take five breaths again. With each breath, we're going to feel ourselves get closer to the mat and settle deeper and deeper towards our ankles. Now that we've warmed up our hips, we're going to explore our first fulcrum. Reach forward with your hands until you feel your center of balance shift over your ankles and shin bones. As you reach, you'll feel your weight leave the mat and feel that your knees and shin bones are the only point touching the mat. This axis, the line between your knees, is going to be your tipping point, your balance point, or your fulcrum. Once you feel yourself balanced on your knees, go ahead and raise yourself up and carefully and deliberately lower yourself back down to explore how you can use that pivot point effortlessly. Let's change our feet and try the same exercise again. As before, take five deep breaths. With each inhale, let your heart rise. With every exhale, let your chest come forward. And use your hands against your knees to help give you a little extra leverage, creating a very triangle posture. As you lay your chest down, you should already feel this time that your weight is coming up onto your shin bones and that your pelvis has left the mat. As you breathe and sink deeper into it, feel where that balance point is and feel that half your weight is behind your knees and half your weight is in front. Now as we rise, we're going to play with that fulcrum and really explore how very small movements can shift our weight behind the fulcrum point of our shins and very small movements can help bring our weight in front and forward of our fulcrum point, which is our shins. Once we have tightened our core and lifted ourselves onto our fulcrum, we should be able to feel that we can move ourselves as slowly as we want up or down to the mat without any effort at all.
Now let's move to a seated position with your feet in front of you. Lean backwards until you can feel that your feet are just about to come off the mat. And you go ahead and pick the feet up just a little bit and balance there on your lower back. This is our second fulcrum point, our sacrum or lower back fulcrum. Now that you know where it is, go ahead and grab one knee, find that fulcrum point again with your weight balanced evenly in front and behind it. And with your extended leg, reach and contract and feel how very small expansion and contraction movements cause your balance to shift front and back from your fulcrum point. Do both sides. Once you've gotten comfortable with that, go ahead and take larger movements until you can feel yourself lay completely on your back and then use both of your legs as a counterbalance to move you all the way to seated and all the way back to laying. So that it isn't really a sit-up motion so much as a counterbalancing motion over that sacral fulcrum. Take time to explore both sides expand and contract, balance forward, balance back. Now let's take it one step further. When from seated position here, open your knees up, leave one leg extended, foot down or stretched out. And remember that shin bone fulcrum? Lean way forward past that knee and shin bone and see if you can't lever yourself forward over this balance point as well. So you can see how the two fulcrums are connected to each other. Moving our center of balance past our sacral fulcrum brings us to our shin bone fulcrum. And moving our center of balance past that leads us to a position where we can rise. Let's take some time to explore this with both legs until you really get comfortable with the balancing, expansion, and contraction ability to move your center of balance. I've changed position here so you can see it from a different angle. Now that you have a feeling for those two fulcrums, let's explore how they can be applied to help you raise from the mat from a seated position or from a supine position on your back, gracefully and deliberately.
The goal is to feel yourself tighten your core, but instead of using your abs like you're doing sit-ups or crunchers to lift, instead to feel your hands, arms, and legs as counterbalances to help you lift yourself up with a lot less effort and much more control. Let's go back to a seated position facing the side of our mat. From a loose, comfortable butterfly pose, try leaning back to one side and extend one foot and an arm to counterbalance. This is exploring the side hip fulcrum, and with small expansions and contractions, you can find yourself moving diagonally front and back. Take some time getting to know this balance point, and once you're comfortable, try lowering yourself all the way down to laying on your side. This reveals a new fulcrum, wherein your upper leg bone, your femur, becomes a new fulcrum as well. Really reach with your extended leg and your upper arm, and even with your down arm, to create the counterbalance to lever you forward or back down towards the mat. Okay, now let's move to the top of our mat and lie supine on your back. Pick your knees up, pick your arms up a little, and pick your head up off the mat. 
and start feeling how by opening an arm to one side or the other, your entire body can start shifting to the right or the left. This is the upper spine or shoulder fulcrum. And here you can feel that by really rounding your shoulders and extending one arm or the other, you can really shift your axial center of balance to the right or the left with very little effort and very small movements. After you've gotten comfortable finding that balance axis on your upper corner of your back, pull your knees up and hold each knee in one of your hands. Repeat the exercise using both your arm and your knee to open yourself up and to shift your balance point past your fulcrum to the right or to the left. Once you've gotten comfortable with that, go ahead and let your elbow drop and start reaching with your upper leg to create a counterbalance over the femur fulcrum. This way we are creating a chain of balance points from one side femur fulcrum through both shoulder corners to the other femur fulcrum. And eventually, as we continue it, we can go over the sh If you can balance yourself on the femur fulcrum, you shouldn't have any difficulty swinging your upper leg around to bring yourself to a cross-legged seated position. And back again. The nice thing about this is you are learning another graceful way to move from a supine position up to a seated position without using your arms or hands or any props to help you up. We can take this further and instead of bringing the upper leg around to cross-legged, we can step up to a raised position. It really helps as you descend to lower your armpit to your lower knee. To me, this is really a fun drill that feels really connected to sawari waza and mobility. So I'm covering it one more time for another angle so you can watch the foot placement as well. I really try to tuck the back feet under as if I'm placing them for knee walking.
By this point, you might have begun to feel how important it is to be able to compress yourself and bring your chest and stomach in forward past your knee. So let's do an exercise where you put your foot down in a kneeling position and bring your elbow to the mat next to your foot and do some loose circles to really sink both your hips and your chest in nice and deep. Once you've done that, reach your foot a little bit further, touch the elbow back down by the foot again, and repeat. We'll do it one more time by stretching the foot way forward and grabbing behind the ankle, but this time we'll just sit back and really kind of relax in and let gravity do the work. Now let's work on a shoulder spiral. You place the back of your palm on the mat and slide it out to the side while spiraling it, keeping it spiraling as far as you can, extending it as far as you can until you feel your palm turn over and touch the mat. Try to keep as much of your arm as possible in contact with the mat. And as you reach, you'll eventually feel the back of your shoulder begin to touch. Eventually, you'll begin to feel more and more your weight begin to load onto that shoulder. And if you're slow and careful, you'll find the next important fulcrum, the side shoulder. Repeat this spiraling, winding on and off, loading more and more of your weight onto that shoulder fulcrum until you can find the balance where your center of balance, your center of weight, is right over that fulcrum. And again, very small motions, expansions and contractions, will bring your weight towards your belt or towards your toes. From this angle, you can see how once the shoulder starts to load, straightening the back leg can help do the full balance load. And by pulling the feet in, it will move the balance towards the back. And by extending the legs as counterbalance, it moves the weight back towards the toes very easily. I know it looks like I'm really wobbly right here, but I'm intentionally exploring moving my balance forward and back through the contraction and expansion of my legs.
Now we're going to get back to that side shoulder fulcrum from the other direction, where we begin by laying in supine position on our back. Raise your feet and reach them over your head until they create a counterbalance. Go ahead and use your hands if that helps. When you're ready to really engage the fulcrum, turn your head to the side that you want to load your weight onto. Avoid stretching directly over the top of your head because that might put a lot of strain onto your neck. This should feel like the same balance point, the same fulcrum that you found through the shoulder spirals. And once you have balanced yourself carefully on it, go ahead and lightly touch your toe down and pick it back up so that you can get comfortable moving your center of balance forward and backward over that shoulder fulcrum. Finally, if you're comfortable touching your toe, go ahead and put a little weight on it and then do the same exercise with your last foot. Once your toe touches down, you've effectively created one more fulcrum in a line between your elbow and your toe. If you counterbalance your top leg, you can again leverage yourself down to touch or to easily balance back onto your shoulder. You're probably pretty good at exploring the balance points right now, but here you can see me demonstrating how micro movements can control my balance and motion front and back. Remember that upper spine fulcrum? Well, we can use that here to shift our weight from the right to the left and back again, especially when we combine it by turning our head to the right and left. So finally, let's combine these to do a slow backward roll from supine position, lying on your back, all the way up to kneeling position. Take the time to look for and feel each fulcrum in sequence to help you move cautiously and deliberately and slowly and with the ability to reverse your direction at any time. So finally, let's do a quick review of all of the actual fulcrums that we've covered in this video. The first one is the sacrum fulcrum. Here we use the contraction and extension of our legs as counterbalance. The next is the shin bones fulcrum. Here we use the extension and contraction of our arms as counterbalance. Next, we have the side hip or hip socket fulcrum, which is closely connected in sequence to the femur fulcrum, where again we're using our leg to counterbalance. Moving to the upper body, we have the upper spine axis fulcrum, where we use our arms and shoulder blades to be able to balance to the left and to the right. And finally, and perhaps most importantly for our rolling ukemi, we have our side shoulder fulcrum, where we are using again our legs to extend and contract to counterbalance our weight going over our shoulder. I hope you found this examination of structure and balance interesting and useful. Try taking an exercise or two that is interesting to you and really make it your own and explore it every day for a couple of months. And if it's useful for you or you enjoyed it, uh, please subscribe and leave a comment. Thanks for watching.